You've probably heard me talking about this self-sufficient living skills bundle that's been going on, and I have been spending the last week flipping through so many of the incredible resources within this bundle. Now, I will say there's a lot. There's over 118 different ebooks and courses and lessons sharing incredible wisdom and knowledge with you, so you can live off the land and you don't have to rely on this corrupt and broken system for everything for your family. Anyways, I wanted to share some of my favorite things. One, first off, is off-grid homeopathy. This course is loaded with so much incredible knowledge, talking about homeopathy for first aid, for colds and flu, how to make your own homeopathic remedies. Like, as an herbalist who loves to teach that stuff, that's pretty exciting to hear it in the homeopathy realm. There's also some incredible fermentation guides, so many other amazing herbal recipes and food recipes and how to make your own sourdough bread, how to do your own organic gardening and canning of all of your foods. Really, there is so much. And yes, I know, I know. I've talked about it a ton, but this entire bundle is only $50 right now until Sunday, March 24th. I'm sharing my herbal first aid skills, which is a course that's $47 on its own. I'm sharing recipes that I used when I got my products into REI for herbal first aid kits and so much more. Y'all have to check it out. I'm serious. Like you can absolutely change your life with this bundle. So there is a link in the show notes for you and I hope you check it out. I hope you take advantage. Don't worry. You don't have to go through everything right away. You can access everything for up to a year. Once you're in the course or have the download, it's yours for life. It is a steal of a deal. Okay, self-sufficient living skills bundle in the links for you. When you do have healthy digestive fire, you're going to see things like nutrient absorption, assimilation, better metabolism, obviously better digestion. It can even go into your overall perception of things, your ability to taste, touch, hear, your overall vitality, clarity, mental alertness, and just having a regular appetite. So having that healthy digestive fire can result in not only better digestive function, but also a a, a sense of perception, cellular metabolism, and mental assimilation, which is just another great link to how mental well-being and your digestive health are directly connected. Welcome to The Herbalist's Path, where we're on a mission to inspire a movement where there's an herbalist in every home, again, with your host, clinical herbalist, Melissa Mutterspa. Hey guys, welcome back to The Herbalist Path, and it's a cold, rainy day in the Pacific Northwest and the foothills of Mount Hood today, and I couldn't think of a better time to talk about herbs to warm up your digestion. So why would you want to do that? Why would you want to warm up your digestion? I know a lot of times we hear about your digestive fire, especially for those speaking about Ayurvedic medicine. So digestive fire in the Ayurvedic studies is also known as Agni. And it's really all about the power of our digestive organs to process and absorb what we eat while also being able to burn off waste products. And when we have strong digestive fire, we're able to easily digest our food and fully absorb its nutrients. If we have weak digestive fire, our body won't digest well, and it'll leave undigested food particles behind that create inflammation in your body. So this inflammation can show up as things like, well, hunger or bloating, indigestion, intestinal cramps, constipation, gassiness, really slow or sluggish digestion or 
a really heavy feeling after a move, a meal, not a move. <laughs> Sorry about that. It can also result in you feeling cold. So like, especially if you're somebody whose fingers and toes are cold all of the time, or you're always needing to be wrapped up in a blanket or scarves, things like that. That's when you might want to think about tur turning to more of the herbs that can help warm and fire up the digestion. Another way you can think um, about it, if you crave sweets or you really have a strong craving for stimulants, it might be a sign that your digestive fire is pretty weak. So when you do have healthy digestive fire, you're going to see things like nutrient absorption, assimilation, better metabolism, obviously better digestion. It can even go into your overall perception of things, your ability to taste, touch, hear, your overall vitality, clarity, mental alertness, and just having a regular appetite. So having that healthy digestive fire can result in not only better digestive function, but also a, a, a sense of perception, cellular metabolism, and mental assimilation, which is just another great link to how mental well-being and your digestive health are directly connected. It can improve your immunity and just give you this extra sparkle in your eye or just a nice little shine to your skin or a glow to your skin. Not a shine like, oh my gosh, I'm so oily, but more like my, oh my, her skin looks amazing. So when your digestive fire is in balance, it causes also your emotions to be greatly affected. So you can get more positive emotions like courage or cheerfulness or just this innate intelligence feeling or something that you are eager to hopefully spread to others. And when you're out of balance, you can start getting some of the more destructive emotions, I guess I'll say. Not that they're bad. These emotions are also part of being human, but things like fear and anger and confusion or the feeling that you're just not good enough or not smart enough or you just think, oh my gosh, I'm a terrible. So when your digestive health is out of balance, it can cause all of those things, which I think is kind of crazy. Another way of talking about this is known as dysbiosis, which is an imbalance in the microbiome of your gut, and it can show up as frequent gas or bloating. You'll often have like a daily feeling of just super bloated. You can suffer from more abdominal cramping, the diarrhea, constipation, and all that kind of really unfun stuff. But I'm over talking about unfun. And there is some good news. There are a host of herbs that can absolutely help warm you up and get that digestive fire blazing, warm up those fingers and toes, and really just to help keep you and your overall vitality and body in balance. And of course, as I like to say, not like to say, it's true. <laughs> what you put in your body makes a huge difference and that absolutely goes into play when we're talking about what food you eat. So if you are continuing to put tons of processed sugars and processed flours and foods that you know your body does not agree with, don't expect the herbs I talk about to miraculously save you. This is a whole body situation. That's not to say that these herbs aren't helpful and you shouldn't put them into your body anyways. I know that we, some people can get into a situation where the food that they have in front of them is the only food that they have and that's what you have to deal with. So by all means, use what is available to you, but if you can avoid all of the inflammatory foods for your body, then you're going to have a much better time finding that balance in the gut. Anyways, that being said, let's talk about the herbs, shall we? 
one of my absolute favorites. And I use the heck out of this herb because it is so yummy and it goes in like everything that I like to make at home except for maybe my coffee. <laughs> And it's garlic. So it is a wonderful herb when you're dealing with dysbiosis. It's specific with damp or cold conditions in your intestines, such as abdominal bloating and pain, flatulence, loose or mucousy stool, or even when those fingers and toes and your extremities are all cold. Garlic can be a really hel a great helper there. And even if there's somebody like yourself or somebody you know suffering from gastritis, I'll turn to garlic if food poisoning is an issue. If you're dealing with stagnation of your food and your whole digestive system, garlic is a fantastic friend to bring on. It will help to balance the microflora of your gut it can help kill off the fungal candida strains. It will reduce intestinal putrefaction and promote normal digestive activity, which is really fantastic. So for intestinal dysbiosis, you can do fermentation of garlic and that is a really easy process to do. There's tons of resources online. I'll try and link to one in the show notes where you can make a nice and easy fermented garlic, which kind of takes away from the potency and the like, ouch, it's so hot. Not taking away from the potency of like its medicinal value. That's still gonna be there for you. You can also eat raw garlic. It can be too hot for many people. I like to infuse it into some local raw honey so the heat of the garlic isn't so incredibly potent as you try and swallow it down. If you can aim to get one clove of raw garlic a day into your body, I feel like they should have said like, a clove of garlic a day keeps the doctor away instead of an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Yeah, aim for one clove into your body, whether you're doing that in honey or you fermented some garlic or you're making a garlic paste or you're cooking with it. Just try and get that good stuff in there because not only is it really warming and great to fire up your digestion, it's also a great immune stimulant. It's a great antibacterial, antimicrobial. As I talked about before, the candida, it's a, an antifungal antiviral it can help kill off parasites i mean garlic has a long 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 list of health benefits and i love it it's delicious it belongs in all of my dishes at home and yeah hopefully you love it too i do know some people that are allergic to garlic and man do i have some sympathy for them I wanted to take a quick pause to show some love and gratitude to our sponsors of the Herbalist Path podcast who make this show possible for me and possible for you too. So here it goes. Medicinal mushrooms are all the rage these days, if you didn't know already. And with great reason, because they are powerful medicine that can improve your health and your life in so many different ways when they're well made. Yeah, it's true. There's a lot of stuff on the market that isn't going to be so effective. And that's why you need to find a brand that you can actually trust. For me, that brand is Whole Sun Wellness. And this is the creation of a brilliant woman and fellow mama, Jamie Bonfiglio. She's an international mushroom educator that has been working in the medicinal mushroom industry for years. And this is when she saw firsthand how many other companies take shortcuts when it comes to their products. And Jamie wasn't having it. She set out to build her company the right way. Whole Sun Wellness is here to raise the industry standards so those crap mushrooms on the market aren't getting into your body or your family's body. Whole Sun Wellness is the first company to test and report nutritional facts for all of their extracts. They go beyond industry standards every step of the way, from sourcing to extraction and final testing. 
And as the owners of the largest medicinal mushroom farm in the United States, Whole Sun Wellness is taking control of their supply chain for the highest quality and absolute full transparency. They're even the first company to include pure mycelium extract in every single product. So when you're thinking of getting medicinal mushrooms for you and your family, Whole Sun Wellness is exactly the ones you want. Also, be sure to check out their new Mycolites. These are the world's first dissolvable electrolyte tablets. They're featuring functional mushroom extracts that'll give you more energy, more stamina, and recovery as well. And who couldn't use all of that? The other thing is, they are these adorable little mushroom-shaped tablets, and they come in like a little Altoids box, but way cooler than Altoids because they're Mycolites. Anyways, head to wholesunwellness.com to grab yourself some mycolites and all of the other functional medicinal mushrooms that you and your family need. And of course, you can grab that link right here in the show notes now. Do be cautious, though. Some people with extreme intestinal dysbiosis may notice outrageous amounts of gassiness and if your stomach is really sensitive garlic is pretty hot as are all the herbs we're talking about that's why they are warming herbs another one uh, a great one she's a culinary herb and I love to use it in food and I love to use it in medicine and I think that's one thing that we really need to Put out into the forefront is that our food is medicine. What we put into our bodies affects the way our bodies operate. I mean, we know this. We all know this. And I know I talk about herbs all the time. I was just recently having a good conversation with my friend, Dr. Orna Isaacson, and she was talking about how she's she's a naturopathic physician. She's also an herbalist and we love to get together and herb nerd out. And she was like, you know, I think I really want to talk more about plant medicine, which is something I've definitely talked about for so long, but just really bringing into the fact that these foods that we're putting into our body are also plants and they also have a dramatic effect on our overall health. So that being said, this next culinary plant that I love to put into food is also a very, very hot one. Some people cannot handle it, but horseradish. So horseradish is going to be really helpful for those that are dealing with, like, if you're just consistently cold or if you have complete appetite loss or your bowel movements are very, very loose or you're bloating a lot, you're nauseous, you've got indigestion, or even if you've got consistent bad breath, horseradish can be really, really nice. It is specific for people that are dealing with chronic gastroenteritis as well. So horseradish is fantastic to stimulate your digestion, it helps to clear chronic intestinal dysbiosis. It's got a lot of antiseptic and analgesic or pain relieving properties to it, which means that it can help relieve or clear up chronic infection, inflammation, and pain. So yay, horseradish, right? If you're somebody who's dealing with food that is stuck and you're suffering from a bloated tummy or intestinal dysbiosis, try some horseradish in your life. I love to use it in my fire cider recipes. It's very commonly used in fire cider. And one of the other things I love about fire cider is that you're also getting the apple cider vinegar in there. There's usually garlic and a bunch of other warming fiery things to get that digestive system ribbed up. Also consider like creating a horseradish fermentation, add some garlic, put in some cabbage, or maybe even some burdock root for all that inulin that is in burdock to help feed the good gut bacteria in your colon. I like to use horseradish when it's fresh. You can make it into a tincture or you can do an overnight cold water infusion of the root. 
If you can handle it, you could juice the fresh horseradish root. That's gonna be a really incredibly effective remedy, but you do wanna be cautious when dealing with the horseradish because I don't know if you've ever just taken a bit too much horseradish on the side of a dish and suddenly your nose is burning and it's running and your eyes are watering like crazy. It can also irritate your kidneys and the mucosa of your gut. So be careful, don't overdo it on the horseradish, but know that it is really something great to, to warm you up and get yourself back into balance. Also be cautious to not use horseradish if you're pregnant or if you have a thyroid deficiency. And if you begin to experience diarrhea or night sweats, it's a good sign that you might want to stop taking your horseradish as medicine. As always, be attentive to what the plants are saying to you and what your body is saying about the plants and how you guys work together because we're all unique. These herbs are not for everybody. They are for some people and that's why I like to bring about a few of them so you can kind of pick and choose, right? What's the herb for you and how else can it help you? Because herbs have way more than one action going on with them within them, but today we're talking about firing up the digestion. So let's talk about another favorite herb of mine that is native to Southeastern Asia, India, and China, where it is used heavily as part of the diet in each of those cultures. It's been used as medicine for centuries and was mentioned in the writings of Confucius from around 500 BCE, which is crazy and awesome because this herb is so delicious and I also love to cook with it. It's ginger and it's a really pungent hot herb that acts as an appetite stimulant as well as a carminative. So that just means that it's gonna help alleviate tummy upset and gassiness. So you can use ginger as a tincture, you can make it into a tea. I love to use fresh ginger root as a tea. It really warms up the body really well and it's the best way to extract those constituents into uh, the water and then into your body. And of course, you can cook with ginger all day long, ferment that stuff, make some yummy, yummy ginger dishes with some garlic and some bright, beautiful rainbow colored veggies to help get you on track. So those are just a couple of the herbs I love to cook main dishes and vegetables with that really spice things up a bunch kind of bring on the heat and the fire and they're fantastic. But there's also some herbs that are really fantastic to put in your more traditionally sweet dishes, although they are spicy. And one of them that I love a lot is originally from the rainforest of Sri Lanka and is considered to be the queen of spices in Indian and other Eastern cultures. It's also an important Ayurvedic, Greek, and Chinese medicine, and it's cardamom. I love cardamom because it's just delicious and has this lovely warmth to it to add into your foods. It's got a little bit of bitterness to it, and it's a great addition to various desserts, I think, and other beverages. It really does a great job of warming your stomach and intestines, it promotes digestion, it relieves bloating, and can help resolve intestinal dysbiosis. It is also a really specific agent in helping to reduce food allergies and intolerance, as well as leaky gut. It can work wonders in helping to settle your stomach and even stop vomiting when needed. So if you do experience nausea or abdominal pain, chills, heartburn, dyspepsia, acute gastritis, think about adding some cardamom into your life. It can really help a lot. I use cardamom in my chaga chai blend, which is this amazing blend with beautiful cardamom pods in there and full star anise pods. I use it in there because it's so yummy, but also just because it's great for warming you up from the inside out. 
It's also known to help restore the nerves, particularly for those that suffer from nervous exhaustion, depression, fatigue, brain fog, poor memory. It's just really nice to lift the mind and relieve depression, which I'm pretty sure a lot of us could use these days. You know what? I like making people happy too with the products that I bring you. So if you haven't tried my chaga chai yet, please do. It's definitely a chai of a different category. It's not your powdered chai with tons of sugar added. You actually see the loose herbs in there. It's a bit of a process to make, like you wanna decoct it or let it simmer for at least 10 minutes up to two hours and beyond. And then you take that concentrate and you mix it with your milk of choice. I really like to mix it with a homemade coconut milk with all that really fantastic, tasty fat in there to bring out all of the other warming benefits of this blend. So just a little inside note, my chaga chai is amazing. It's a great way to get cardamom inside of your body if you're trying to deal with dysbiosis in the gut and other abdominal issues and gut health issues. So, And another one that is in the chaga chai and a few of my other teas, this one I add to my coffee in the morning. I add it to a lot of things. I just had it last night on this beautiful purple sweet potato I had for dinner. And it's used all over the place. It's cinnamon. It's so delicious. And it's really fantastic for warming you up from the inside out. It's a circulatory stimulant. So it's gonna bring a lot of blood to those extremities, keeping your fingers and toes a little bit more warm. And of course, it's helpful in resolving intestinal dysbiosis as well as dealing with stomach pain. It can even help to reduce blood sugar. So cinnamon is a very specific herb to use for those dealing with appetite loss or if you are having a major problem with undigested foods or loose stools. If you're dealing with colic or just a distended abdomen where you're pretty much always bloated and you don't know why, cinnamon can be a really great helper there. But while cinnamon, cinnamon is going to help you, I don't know if any of you said cinnamon when you were a kid all the time. I definitely did. And I think it just slipped out there. <laughs> it happens, right? Anyways. While I'm talking about all of these issues of the gut, it is important to recognize that it's usually a sign of underlying causes and symptoms, and you should work with a doctor, work with a qualified herbalist, work with a healthcare practitioner that can help you get to the bottom of what's going on and why you're dealing with pain, inflammation, distended abdomen, and things like that. So yeah, just wanted to make sure you keep that in mind. And let's just quickly touch base on cinnamon for a bit longer. Like I said, I use it in my chaga chai. I also use it in my hibiscus heart song, another fantastically delicious tea that happens to have a few herbs in it that are great for digestive health. It's my daughter's favorite tea too. She absolutely loves it whether it's warm or on ice, and cinnamon is one of the main key fe features in there. I put it in there more for its heart healthy uh, benefits. So you can also use cinnamon as a tincture and make a little decoction of it. Ideally, if you're taking cinnamon internally, the powder of cinnamon is the best way, the most effective way to get it into your body to take care of intestinal issues. And of course, if you are feeling something funny when you're taking cinnamon and trying to use it medicinally, stop. Listen to your body, listen to the plants. They know what's best for you, even if somebody has told you to take this. Just, just be aware, be conscious, and pay close attention. So I love cinnamon. I could use it all the time. It's definitely not recommended for pregnant or nursing mothers, at least to not be taken in medicinal quantities. Sure, add a sprinkle here and there to whatever treats you want. That sounds great. Yeah, 
So those are just a couple of the warming herbs that you can use to fire up your digestion. And if you are intrigued by these warming herbs and more knowledge about your gut health, be sure to join me in my Facebook group where I'll be doing live classes two times a week. You're welcome to ask me questions. We can hang out a bit more. It's a fun group. I've been having a really good time in there and people keep coming back. So I believe that they're having a good time in there too and learning a lot. So yeah, come check us out. There's, a, there's going to be a link to the Facebook group down below. And also I will be hosting a free workshop all about leaky gut and how you can use herbs to help mend it. I'd love for you to join me for that free workshop coming up. I'm going to go ahead and post a link to register in the show notes. And of course, if you're enjoying this podcast, please subscribe and rate the show. It really helps out and share it with your friends because we need to make herbalism spread like wildflowers, y'all. And of course, feel free to shoot me a message somewhere. Let me know what you're enjoying about the show. Let me know what you don't like. Let me know what you want to hear. I want to hear from you. If you love this episode and you think somebody could really benefit from hearing about what we just chatted about, take a screenshot, post it, tag the Herbalist Path or tag Mountain Mel's and share, share, share. And until next time, y'all have a beautiful day. Thanks so much for tuning in. This has been The Herbalist's Path. Thanks for joining us. Have we piqued your herb curiosity? Are you thirsty for more? Well, then check out the show notes of today's episode for exciting educational opportunities, workshops, and courses. If you'd like to support our mission, please subscribe, rate, and review to help others find us. Together, we can make herbalism hashtag spread like wildflowers. Wishing you all a lovely day. Bye for now. It has been so much fun and so, I don't know, joyous watching all of my medicinal plant friends popping up in my garden from the Ella Campaign to the Comfrey and the Arnica. I love seeing these friends pop up. And if you are still trying to decide what to grow in your medicinal herb garden, you've got to grab my guide. It's all about the most essential herbs that every mom should know and should grow. So I teach you how to grow them and the many different ways that you can use them. If you want to grab the guide, go ahead. It's free and I'm pretty sure you're going to get a lot of delight and use out of it. And there's a link to it in the show notes. I'm wishing you tons of happy medicine planting.